Today, Rishi Sunak is launching an employment plan which promises to help veterans secure highly paid jobs after they leave the armed forces. £2.1 million is being put into Operation Prosper, but is that just a drop in the ocean to support those who put their lives on the line for our country? GB News reporter Charlie Peters joins us live in the studio. Good morning, Charlie. Some would say £2.1 million is a drop in the ocean. It's not going to touch the sides. Is that enough well, for, for our veterans? That is the perspective of Steve McCabe, Labour's veterans, shallow veterans minister, who said that it's a step in the right direction, but he said that more broadly the government has been failing the veterans community after the last 14 years, saying that they've halved, in his view, support for veterans' employment. Now, what the government's trying to do here is bring in more of a connection between the armed forces community and actually a lot of areas of employment and many industries where they're not typically associated, such as energy, manufacturing and indeed the professional services. 89% of veterans are employment, which is uh, an all-time high as it stands. And that actually compares with a nationwide average of 75%. So veterans actually, in comparison to the wider public, are in a much better position. However, this does come at a, a time where the government is trying to engage with wider veterans' issues. Homelessness and mental health have been key pledges of their mission since, uh, since this parliament came into effect. And they are trying to capitalise, I think, on a much broader success that we've, we have seen in wider UK industry. Professional services are now worth £185 billion. It's mm. seen Britain become the fourth largest exporter in the world on the back of that rise. So trying to bring veterans in that space could help bring that 89% even higher. You mentioned their homelessness. Mm. That is a growing po problem. Last year, homelessness amongst veterans, we understand, in England, rose by 14%. Yeah, and a major issue. And you know, the Veterans Minister, Johnny Mercer, we visited a facility that he launched in December as part of that long-term plan to bring veterans' homelessness. This government actually pledged at the end of last year to end it. One of the main questions GB News was asking then repeatedly was, you've made this pledge, you're nowhere near achieving that target. And they say the government's position is that they've got all the resources in place to end veterans' homelessness and the plan is there, it's just going to take time. Speaking to many of the charities that work in homelessness, for veterans. And it's important to stress, actually, this is a wraparound service. There's no just you work in homelessness and nothing else. They're working very much in employment, mm. issues around addiction. It is a holistic approach to dealing with the issue. They say very much that the approach needs to be broader. You need to take in all of these considerations. You can't just offer a home. I speak to many uh, homeless people down by the seaside where I live in West Sussex and they say that they suffered from PTSD from various tours abroad, Afghanistan, Iraq, and they say they just weren't getting the help, the mental health help mm. from either the army or the government or the NHS to treat that PTSD. How big an issue is PTSD uh, and associated mental health problems with vets? I think there's a, a, a national consciousness about this issue now, but in particular from many of the charity campaigns that were launched during the wars in Afghanistan and indeed in Iraq. But the army always stresses, as do many troops, that soldiers actually on average have a stronger mental health record than the wider public. It's when people leave that those issues arise, in particular with employment and homelessness, because the army might have provided your entire life, or the Navy, or the Marines, or the Air Force, your, your housing, your employment, of course, but also medical and dentistry. Your whole community, your whole life is within those barbed wires. And suddenly, if you leave that space, then you're at the mercy of the civilian what, world. What does the army do to help prepare leavers for the real world, for Civvy mm. Street? Well, I think those transition processes are, are, are constantly being improved. But £2.1 million that's going on to uh, improving the link between the military and industry. Well, the Labour say that it's a step in the right direction. Mm. It's clearly, clearly part of a much broader and ongoing package. Interesting as well that this is coming at the same time as um, the former Armed Forces Minister James Heapy's been speaking mm. about um, requiring veterans again to, to, to serve again in a national crisis. He's mm. talking about having a large strategic reserve. Mm. And members of the Armed Forces who've left often within the last up to 20 years, regularly get letters from the Ministry of Defence asking them if they're still available should the balloon go up and you're required mm. to serve again. That strategic reserve has kind of always been in place, but it is certainly being renewed amid these ongoing threats. And, of course, the size of the British Army now is below the capacity of Wembley Stadium. It has been for a long time and it is shrinking. We're going to hear later about 
Labour's potential commitment to the armed forces to, to turn that around. But from the government's perspective today, it's all about veterans and improving that wraparound support. Okay. Thank you.